Thank you, Riedel, for giving us an insight uh, into a typical wheel line used in Europe. I would like to give a commercial twist to an otherwise exceptional technical rhetoric we've been hearing for many hours. I would like to encourage all of you to ask a question, having seen that wheel line. Can we cut and paste such kind of painting line in India? What I mean by cut and paste is, can we use exactly similar capacity, similar design, similar robots, similar components, and install a line in India? The answer is, as long as we get an ROI similar to Europe, why not? If an ROI in Europe for such a line is possible in three to four months, four years, if we can get the similar ROI, we can install the same line. Is it possible to get a similar ROI in India? These are the questions. Let me try to answer this. Any product that's available in America at one dollar should be available at 66 rupees a year with an exchange rate. To answer this question related to ROI, let's look at certain macroeconomic factors when you compare between Europe, US, China and India. You know everyone that GDP market size we are talking in India is far lower compared to China 10 trillion, USA 18 trillion, 14.5 trillion. Any product that's manufactured with a higher market size means higher capacity of production, cost of production and the price as well. The second factor to be compared is the number of motorcycles manufactured per year, sorry, number of motor vehicles manufactured per year, this is the comparison, which means the product production is far lower in India compared to even in China. Now let me also compare the average monthly salary. This is taken for 2012. Again, quite a low price. Now, the average salary is a double-edged sword. You want lower cost because you want to reduce the production capacity, production cost. On the other hand, you want the cost of wage to go up because they could afford the cars. And it works both ways. I've taken a BMW 5 Series car and compared in Europe, US, a price and the price in India and China because of high taxation. If you see all these factors, these are unfavorable for ROI. In other words, with these factors, the ROI could be extended far more than what you will get in Europe. I also know we do the job for a bumper company and we got the actual facts. The price you get for an auto component from the OEMs in India, if it is X, this is how the comparison is. In other words, they get far higher price in elsewhere in the world. The other killing factor is an interest rate. The interest rate in Europe 2.7, 3.3, even in China it's 6 percent and India is 14 percent, which again changes the dynamics and the mathematics regarding ROI. Currency fluctuation, except this year in Europe, which is minus 15 percent, Ours is 10 to 12 percent over the last several years, and China unusually is plus 5 percent, 4 percent. Inflation is again a, compare, a factor which needs to be compared, and you see the factors again unfavorable. In other words, what we are trying to say is most of these conditions are unfavorable for getting an ROI if we have to take the same kind of line and install it in India. In other words, we will not get a similar ROI in India. But there is a constant tussle between the finance department and the technical team. The technical team wants a line which is exactly similar to which is existing elsewhere in the world. But the finance department ROI is a factor which pulls in the opposite direction. What is the way forward? Now, cutting down the investment seems to be one of the options many of us 
scene happening in the Indian industry. In other words, who shouts louder, finance team or the technical team? You know the answer. Obviously, the CEO listens to the finance team. So, at the end of the day, you cut down the investment, but the consequent effect is the quality effects. That means you are not able to produce a product which could be globally competitive. So these two are both ends. One is cutting down the investment or the quality. The both are not possible. So fusion between European technology and Indo Indian innovation seems to be the way forward, which we are suggesting. There are three things. One is instead of reducing the investment, optimize the investment, we call it. Second is explore alternate process instead of using the same process. Reduce the running cost, paint and energy. Now, I give you a comparison in China between 2004 and 2014. The wage cost has gone up 200 percent. Power cost has gone up 57 percent and natural gas cost gone up 138 percent. And now you know why they are not becoming competitive. What this aspect is showing us is that anticipated future increase in cost is another killing factor which could happen in emerging markets like China and India and probably India will follow this. So with all these unfavorable conditions, if we can do the Indian innovation, value addition in India with the European technology could be the way forward. Now this is a line installed in France, the painting line, a robotic line sourced from India. An advanced IT solution exported to Europe. A robotic painting line installed by us and in France for an automotive company, a robotic line. In other words, the countries which are elsewhere in the world are also looking at reducing the investment in spite of favorable conditions. What more evidence is required for the need to optimize the investment? I would like to give you certain examples of how a value addition can be done by an Indian company on the foundation of an European technology. Here is a line we have installed for ABB. Traditionally, the transformers fins are shower liquid painted. The paint doesn't reach inside the fins. Now the process has changed. Now, two coat powder process before that nanotechnology was used in a plant like this. And this cuts down the cost. And this is one of the innovation which we could say. The other one is spraying water based paint, maintaining a temperature and humidity below the grating, and changing the overspray paint to powder form and collect the powder form, the paint with cyclones and filters. In other words, spray the liquid, collect it in powder form. This is an innovation. There's another product which has been in the market over the years, but not known to many countries in this part of the world. A magic painter. It paints without the use of compressed air. Most of us grown up hearing compressed air is required for painting. This doesn't need compressed air for painting, but it instead uses dry, heated, dehumidified air, which is generated. And it does it at, the atomization is done at a pressure of 6 to 7 PSI with a huge amount of volume. Because it is 6 to 7 PSI, power of the compressor is almost 50 percent. And the transfer efficiency is as good as electrostatic bell. But it doesn't suffer the disadvantage Bell can do it because Bell cannot penetrate into corners and crevices because of Faraday cage effect, whereas this can do it. Now, here is a setup, Porsche, wheels, the guns. These guns uses air which is heated, dehumidified, dry air, which also helps in even, even out the paint film. Used for paint for aerospace, defense vehicles, automotive, all kinds of plastic parts. This is very commonly used for this kind of setup. So this is another innovation to reduce the paint cost. If the paint cost can be saved so much along with the power cost, this is again an innovation. The other one is to reduce the energy cost with using solar thermal, not the solar power. And uh, a solar thermal could 
be used for heating the degreasing solution, phosphating solutions, drying ovens, and installing a solar line with an investment payback of eight to ten months is possible. It used to be three to five years earlier, but now it's possible. It's very much a reality to use this such a system. And then another one is the gas radiation technology with the catalytic system where you can heat the paint without heating a rail coach or a bus or a windmill. And you can heat the paint alone and dry it in three to five minutes compared to heating up a rail coach which takes one hour and then cooling down again takes another 45 minutes before you apply the next coat of paint. These are the examples of innovation I'm showing. Again, you use evaporative cooling and then use temperature humidity control. This is a line we have done for aircraft parts painting uh, in Hyderabad. Uh, this we again use uh, innovative system for reduce the chiller plant capacity. Adding inno Indian innovation to the pure proving, proven in European technology can create faster RO ROI. Yet, you can afford a world-class painting line without drastically cutting down the investment with compromises. In other words, what we are trying to say is if the ROI is the problem, don't cut down the investment, but look at the running cost reduction and by doing innovation. And you may ask, why not innovation? Why only from India? We feel that innovation coming from elsewhere from the world is expensive and it reaches you far later. It doesn't reach you ahead of time. This is our experience. Now, this is the happiness face of a CEO. A sustainable business model is required to create global companies from India. If you want to create global companies in the manufacturing industries, they must have a differentiation which is sustainable over a period of time. If that can be possible only with adding Indian innovation. It means continuous Indian innovation is required and there is a huge opportunity in paint shops for doing this kind of innovation. If India can succeed in mass mission with 100% Indian innovation and Indian technology, why not in paint shop technology? After all, it's not rocket science yet. Thank you very much for your attention.